our argument will be that space is not real. It's not real. Science, technology, it's all fake. It's a projection of white fantasies that has worked to control our interpretation of how the world works. What's going on everyone, Derek Blackman here. How you doing? Sorry I've been gone for so long, but I've been moving. I'm in gross LA right now. I've always lived close to LA, but not in the city of Los Angeles itself. And uh, it might be a little echoey right now because my room's not set up. And also you might hear some planes flying over because I'm pretty close to LAX, so I apologize in advance. Now the reason I wanted to make this video is because you guys tagged me everywhere on every single piece of social media that I own or that I use. You guys were like, have you seen this? You gotta talk about this. And I'm, I'm fully aware of it. I watched the first few minutes of it and my first impression was, this seems fake. This is too ridiculous. It reminds me of like 2006 when everyone was freaking out so much. Like I haven't seen videos like this before in a long time. And yeah, you know. Turns out it's 100% real, so let me break down what I'm talking about for, the, for those of you that aren't aware of this video. So this sophisticated caveman posted a 40 minute video on his YouTube channel of his debate professor at Weber State. This dude's name is Ryan Wash, I'm pretty sure. And uh, he is, he really, really doesn't like white people. <laughs> Like, like really so much so that he thinks pretty much everything that white people have made or, or anything that is in white culture or that is entrenched in whiteness is not real, like space and a whole lot of other wacky stuff. And because I saw that the first few minutes, I'm like, this seems like a troll to me. And then in a separate video, Michael showed that his debate professor is, you know, he's known in the debating circuit and he's he has some debates that you can watch online that are, uh, <laughs> let's just say, I can't believe it's real. First, to get this out of the way, no, I didn't fake the video of my racist professor. This actually happened. It happened at Weber State University, and the professor in question is Ryan Wash, who teaches in the communications department. I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do when this debate is over. I don't know how the hell I'm gonna situate myself, but I know one thing that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make proof for those other poor bodies that have never, ever fucking had a right to speak and have a debate in their own fucking house. Nobody asked me about energy production. Nobody asked me what it means to get out of bed in the morning, which is why In terms of this debate where there is an explosion of blackness inside of this particular space going on, the one judge at this fucking tournament who won a CETA championship doesn't have the ability to evaluate an all-black debate inside of this space, but it's your niggas are the ones who hold you back. My daddy and my mama beat my motherfucking ass and told me to quit hanging out with my motherfucking sister because that's the only person that I had. But what happens when my dick keeps getting hard because I'm looking at a fat ass of this man? How the fuck am I supposed to rationalize that? What do you mean you can't be fucking weird? Now since the video is 40 minutes long, I'm just gonna take you through the highlights, just the juiciest part, so you can just see how you, this dude is trying to argue that space isn't real or everything's entrenched in whiteness, everyone partakes in whiteness, doesn't matter what color you are, it's a it's a state of mind. All this wacky stuff, man, I, I haven't even scratched the surface, so without further ado, let's get into it. Imagine someone who grew up inner city Kansas City, for instance, who never left a 20 block radius. They can't even fathom that there's mountains in the world, let alone that there's something outside of that. Does that make sense, right? And so structural inequity to some degree because of our lack of privilege in terms of mobility determines what we can understand to be real and falsifiable. Basically, dude's just trying to say, I need to see it to believe it. But I guess physically in person see it. You know, oh, I've never seen a mountain before, so how do I know mountains are real? Which is so crazy. That is such a stupid, just, just astronomically stupid argument. It, I don't even need to say why it's stupid. <laughs> he goes on though. So like, what about like telescopes or black astronauts who have been to space? What black astronauts? There's been like 14. If you just Google black astronauts, there's a lot of them. Yeah, there's astronauts, not every astronaut goes to space. Yeah. So there's a, if you go to the Wikipedia, there's 14 that went to space and then there's a whole you lot. Just, you just sitting in an academic space and you just cited Wikipedia? Well, I mean, yeah, I'm sure they have other sources, but like if, yeah, well, if you look up the identity of these people, okay. Um, so like Goo and Stuart Bo Bo Blueforth. They said space was real? 
Well, he went to space. Did he say it was real? <laughs> so at this point, maybe you're thinking, oh, he's just really trying to challenge him, just really prepare him, do the ultimate devil's advocate, like, oh, yeah, you can't use Wikipedia or, you know, so on and so forth. But no, as I showed you before in this college professor's debating world, he actually subscribes to these ideals. He's all about his queerness and his blackness and everything else like that. All the, all the new cute buzzwords that, you know, progressive ideologues have been throwing around recently. And uh, yeah, so it gets kind of crazy where he challenges a notion like that, like, oh, what about black astronauts, you know? And he's just like fucking just trying to deflect it, like, whatever, I don't know them, I haven't seen them, not every, not every astronaut's been to space. And you know what's funny? I learned about Bernard Anthony Harris Jr. because of this meme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's incredibly racist and that's why I think it's funny because I like dark and fucked up humor. But like, I was like, who is this guy? And then I learned, I'm like, oh, this dude did some really important shit. That's really cool. And yes, you can find this on Wikipedia, which is verifiable by the man himself. You can verify that space isn't real because you haven't been there. Yeah, there's no evidence that it exists. My, my, ev my life is evidence of the fact that space does not exist. So the only thing, the only type of evidence that's accessible to you is your direct experience? Absolutely. <laughs> what the fuck? Can you imagine being so egotistical, being so arrogant, being so in your own world that only your life experience matters? That's what dictates the world around you 100% because he hasn't been to space. Space isn't real because it's not his reality. Can you imagine? And you know what? I can imagine. Because all these fucking people, you know, we call them SJWs, whatever the fuck. I call them progressive ideologues because that's more accurate to what they are. You know, they're just fucking completely progressive zealots. They just subscribe to this fucking crazy world that only what they think is truth. That's it. So when they talk about whiteness and, and, and everything and whiteness is a plague and white people are a problem and this and that and every fucking person of color is oppressed, especially black people, that is their perception and that's how the world works because only their perception matters. That is fucking crazy, but very cult-like and not surprising. Like, how do I know that slavery happened if I didn't see it, right? Because we have history. Can well, I just I say can slavery never happened? It's post-traumatic slave disorder. Yeah. Well, I've never experienced that, so does post awesome. it doesn't exist then? You can say that it didn't. I mean, a lot of your people say that it didn't. Oh, shit. Post-traumatic slave disorder. The first time I heard that term was when I was watching a documentary called Accidental Courtesy that follows Daryl Davis. And I'm sure if you guys have been watching me for a long time, you've probably heard me mention him a couple of times where that dude was going around, you know, and, and it, it was accidental because he didn't mean to do it. But he made a bunch of clan members, a bunch of racist motherfuckers, renounce their racism and retire their robes, you know, in the clan, just for talking to them, befriending these people. You know, these people realize, like, oh, you know what? I was an ignorant, dumb asshole, and we're not so different after all. I was afraid. I was. I was brainwashed. You know, I was just in this stupid ass ideology that just pit us against each other. And I wish things weren't that way. And so Daryl is done. A ton of great work, you know, a ton. And this is gonna transcend over time because all those people that he converted, all those people they made renounce their racism, that's what they're gonna teach their kids now. And their kids, instead of like ignoring the hate or, or just making fun of racist people or just trying to shit on them and just emboldening them in their racism, he went the other route. I appreciate that. And But in that documentary was the first time I heard post-traumatic slave disorder and yeah, it, you know, like, I guess they try to use it in a way that how certain disorders, like how they say, oh, you have the gene for alcoholism or whatever, these things are passed along to me. I don't think that's the case, but it's very easy to convince somebody so, just like there's a lot of hypochondriacs, just like how placebos are 100% a real thing, you can really convince someone of anything. People are very susceptible to bullshit. And that is 100% bullshit in my opinion. You know, I feel like most people, most black people, would just be living their lives, chilling, not thinking about shit like that at all, until somebody comes along and puts that shit in their head. That hey, you know, you have post-traumatic slave disorder because you're a descendant of slaves. And these dudes think that fucking every black person has that. And the funny thing is, not every black person is a descendant of slaves. 
So fuck off with that shit. All right, I really want to prepare you for this next part because it is so astronomically silly. I mean, you know that people like this like to, you know, make words mean whatever they want them to mean. The first thing that comes to your mind probably is the definition of racism. It has now been rewarded to power plus prejudice, you know, the progressive ideological definition. So with that in mind, listen to this. I mean, I think the topic areas help to understand what the topic meant when it said national space policy. But I think space is something that is not just specific to outside our stratosphere, but also kind of how we address people interpersonally, the difference between public and intimate forms of speech, et cetera, et cetera. What I'm getting at is arguments in regard to consent and about whether or not one can encroach upon the body. For instance, if how can you have the United States federal government cooperate with another entity for space policy? Should anyone be able to cooperate or have influence on your space, for instance? Um, and so it could be argued that the topic is really rapey if we understand space, space differently because it will require external influence on how you move throughout space. What do you even say to that? Honestly, that is so wild. <laughs> it's like, it's hard to even come up with something quippy. It's just the best, you know, mental gymnastics in the game. And I, I don't have anything clever to say to that. And it gets worse. Couldn't you argue that the terms in the topic, like space-based, deep space, like these are terms, and because the topic uses yeah, those specific terms. All of those things can be interpreted differently. Arms control of space weapons. Why isn't that like Title IX? Yeah, I mean that one you could, but like the other one, like deep space exploration or space-based type. Space exploration, yeah. joint human space flight. So, excuse my French, but now we're talking about like gang bangs. So, you being like, if they're women debaters and they're like, this is what space means and you're like no actually space means this way this this is like a form of linguistic violence i'm not going to go so far as to say the r word in there but it's the form of linguistic assault by which you get to determine the reality for me so i asked for it because i participated in the debate i asked for a debate about competing interpretations now do you understand how mentally unstable this guy is He's like, we must be careful with these words that we use because you might be talking about space and then other people might think space means another thing, you know, which can get a little bit, you know, some sexual assault talk. And we talk about deep space exploration. That sounds like a gangbang. What the fuck? <laughs> can you imagine? It's, can you? It's like treating somebody as, I don't even know, because I'm pretty sure if you're talking about a specific topic, like space, you know, outer space, people know what the fuck you're talking about. You don't need any further explanation or no one's gonna get fucking triggered and think something else. They're not gonna think about sexual assaults or gang bangs. That is fucking wild. <laughs> space. So at this point in the video, some of the other students get involved and it gets a little bit more hostile and much more funnier to me. Little black boys are getting shot at, but white people go to Mars. Black families from coast to coast didn't need to date, but white people will enjoy their three-course meals in their spaceships. Black bodies are depleted on the killing fields and white people run it. And white people run it. We affirm putting an end to the killing fields. Black bodies are done with it. Thus, all white should be sent on the one-way trip to continue their deep space exploration and find a new home. Black bodies will keep Earth. This is our way of uh, destroying the killing fields that whiteness has ruled upon. If there is, if there are no whiteies on Earth, there is no killing field. All we have done is imagine what a better life looks like, and that life is one without the whiteies ruling over black bodies, and that life, a better life exists where black bodies will flourish on Earth. The creators of capital will be MIA. Jesus, that was like one entire sentence, and I had to cut him off because I'm pretty sure you guys got the gist of what he was saying. So essentially, whiteies go to space, colonize some other shit, and leave the black people to be free, I guess, you know. Essentially, give us the ethno state or the ethno world. Racial <laughs> capitalism. Why is capitalism white? Racial capitalism. Racial capitalism. <laughs> what is that? 
That means that we that white whiteness has prescribed a value to black bodies even though they are priceless. What's the warrant for that? That there's this indiscriminate type of group text violence that white people said, oh, black people are less than us. That group text violence cannot be explained, and that is what created right. white Do people all white people do that? Yes. Well, they all... All white people say all, that I'm worth more than black people? They yes. all function... They all... They are... So even if you say that you don't... That was a anything, close question. Yes. Close to answer. Yes. Therein lies the biggest problem right there. That is the most toxic part of their ideology. It's like, oh, all white people think this. All white people think that black people are lesser than them. And so that's what they think. So that's, the ho that's why they have the hostility towards white people. And that's so sad. It's like a vicious cycle. It's like a vicious cycle where it's like, oh, all white people are racist. All black people are like this. All it, it, You know what I mean? It's it's one of those things that it's like the extremists are fucking ruining everything, especially because people are allowing extremists like and progressive idealism to to seep into academia and then do shit like this. I just don't understand how none of you see how incredibly racist the plan is to spend an entire group of race to space. Because you're white, go to space. That's incredibly racist. That's on the definition. Basis, goes further than the uh, on what basis? No, he didn't. He said, if you're white, you go to space. Yeah, just having sure. skin color being that's by definition racism. Uh, how so? Like, I just don't understand. I think that you're like you racism. Have to be racist towards white people. Because your skin color doesn't determine the level of your power. That's that's a. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. There are people who are. Did you catch that right there? L let me let me read it for you. Let me read what this broad said. What makes you think that black people have the social power to actually be racist towards white people? She thinks I and people who have similar skin complexion don't have any power over white people, especially socially. And it's very unfortunate because there isn't much of a difference between her and your stereotypical slack jawed racist. The only difference is that she pities me and they hate me, but it's all racism. Now there's a lot more that I could show, but I think this has gone on long enough already. I think you guys got in the gist of how insane this goes. It got a little bit more heated. You know, the professor didn't want to take any more questions or anything from the guy. And it, it was pretty much to the point where the dude just quit the class. He was like, I'm done with this. I quit the debate. I'm dropping this class. This is garbage, which is, I'm pretty sure most of us would have did the same thing because pretty much you're only going to enjoy that class is if you subscribe to that ideology. So Michael, the intellectual caveman, he took it up with the school, you know, he wanted to hear from the dean, and pretty much he heard some stuff back, but they, just, they, they essentially just said in a nutshell that they're going to explore it further. Well, like I said, this video is probably really long, so I'm gonna stop right here. I hope you guys enjoyed this wild ride. I found it fascinating, a little annoying, a little infuriating, but not really because we've seen this dumb shit before and it's kind of just, rearing its head again seems like people are ramping up the crazy because the elections right around the corner and because of trump and all this shit people are losing their fucking minds anyway make sure you like this video subscribe and all that junk i love you guys very much so all the links are in the description if you want to support me i would appreciate it have a good one guys